telescope in the Chabot Observatory in the Oakland Hills. Members of the East Bay Astronomical Society are getting the huge telescope ready for tomorrow's open house celebrating National Astronomy Day. Of course, the purpose of the event is to generate more interest in astronomy, and the public will get a powerful view of the heavens through this micro tele telescope, rather. Tomorrow night, we will have all the main instruments in the observatory open. We're going to have a planetarium show and laser demonstrations and computer demonstrations and some demonstrations on how to make a telescope uh, by the average public or the average layman. And uh, we'll have uh, science demonstrations and there's going to be amateur telescopes set up on the parking lot to demonstrate to the public how easily it is for any person to make a telescope at a very, very minimal cost. The open house runs from 7 p.m. to midnight tomorrow. It's open to the public. The Chabot Science Center, which is run by the Oakland Public School System, is at 4917 Mountain Boulevard in the Oakland Hills. There will be plenty of astronomers on hand to answer all your questions. Hope that this observance of National Astronomy Day, correspondent Jeff Levine reports. Americans will be encouraged to look toward the stars Saturday, which is National Astronomy Day. It's an observance that began here in the San Francisco area and has since spread across the nation into several foreign countries. Here at the Chabot Science Center in Oakland, an open house will mark the occasion, complete with displays of space-age experiments and a chance to look through the largest telescope that's open to the public. With the aid of this 30-foot colossus, you can get a first-rate glimpse of Saturn or Jupiter. The whole idea is to generate enthusiasm enthusiasm for astronomy, and amateur astronomer Jim Ferreira thinks that the successful space shuttle mission should help bring people out, and he hopes that once they get a look through the telescope, they'll be hooked. There, there's a great deal of wonder. Anybody that comes up here and looks at one of these large instruments at Jupiter or the moon or, or a galaxy or star cluster, they, they, they walk away changed, I think. The people here at the Science Center also hope to recruit volunteers for this unique air pollution measurement study. Created by scientists at the Lawrence Livermore Nuclear Laboratory, this equipment uses astronomical techniques to measure pollution in the entire San Francisco area. A light source on a mountain across the bay is aimed at the telescope, and data about what happened to the light as it traveled through the air is analyzed by a computer. Those who want to can take part in monitoring the study, an unusual opportunity to participate in an important science project. Jeff Levine, Cable News, Oakland, California. In a way that may surprise you. New Scenes Bob Marshall learned about that during a trip to the weather station at Oak Oakland Chabot Science Center. Here's his report. The center is operated by the Oakland school system and several science courses are taught here. Many of the staff members and instructors are volunteers from area colleges and from the Lawrence Livermore lab. Oh. On the roof of the main building is a weather station. Cal State Hayward student Conrad Jung considers astrophotography his primary field, but he doubles in weather, and here's how he collects his figures. Shortly after sunset, I come up and I make my weather uh, observations. They usually are the high and the low, and if there's any precipitation, I record those also. Now, what are the other instruments? You have a thermometer. Yes, we have a maximum and minimum thermometer. Uh, and a thermal hydrograph, which records both the, the temperature and the humidity for a one-week period. And there's a barometer in there. Yes, there's an aneroid barometer. The data you collect uh, then go where? Well, first we put it on a computer so we can record the data for our records, and then the data goes uh, to the National Weather Service. And that's pretty straightforward. Conrad's daily observations taken here at the Chabot Science Center, as in so many other locations around the Bay Area, then fed for compilation into the National Weather Service computers. In the adjacent building, the observatory building, there's a little more sophisticated research going on, the use of a telescope by physicist Bill Porch to study air pollution. For the last 10 years, we've been doing research in the San Francisco Bay Area in measuring air pollution by using astronomical techniques. Now the reason this is important is because most people believe that atmospheric aerosols and air pollution have been increasing in the Bay Area because people have been increasing in the Bay Area. But that's not necessarily so. In fact, our measurements show that air pollution has gone up and down in the Bay Area independent of whether a population changes and pollution control. And this is because wind and meteorological effects affect pollution more than human beings do. So we have to isolate the effect of human beings from our measurements. So we are measuring air pollution and wind and mixing depth, inversion heights, 
over long distances so that we can compare them on the same kind of scale. Bill's telescope is trained on a light across the bay. You can detect wind movement and with a spectrograph determine the composition of smog by looking through the pollution at setting stars. Bill Porch and his colleagues perfected a portable version to analyze air pollution in the Geyserville area in connection with geothermal exploration. Another example of some current meteorological research. And all the bits and pieces will come together to help us get a little better understanding of this ocean of atmosphere we all have to live in. And Pete, what would you say that old atmosphere holds for us tomorrow? Uh, 